Hello, uh, I'm Elka Baker, and this is the Potomac Valley Scottish Fiddle Club April 2023 Music Workshop. Um, we had to redo it because we had a live stream failure at the live meeting, uh, in-person meeting. So uh, here's the redo. It's going to be a little bit condensed. I'm going to teach the music a little faster because I'm assuming that you'll be able to pause it and rerun the video if you want to go over any particular section longer. Um, so the theme this month is tunes that move in three, um, and specifically we're focusing on three types of tunes. There are slip jigs. These are very similar in feel to a regular jig, and regular jig is in six eight time. It's two groups of triplets per bar. Da, 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 a slip jig just adds a third beat each bar. Da, 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 that's a slip jig. We'll be having a few of those. Um, in addition, we'll be uh, looking at slow airs that are in that same meter of 9-8. And um, it's the same meter as the slip jig, but because the tempo is so much slower, very different feel. We'll also be looking at retreat marches. Retreat marches can be in 9-8 but they have a different feel from the slip jigs because they sound much marchier. And then the, the cousin of the 9-8 retreat march is the retreat march in three quarter time. We'll have some of those this time as well. And these retreat marches are um, written in three quarter time. Superficially, it might look like a slow air or a waltz in three quarter time. Really different feel because it is a march and there are definitely some beats within it that um, are emphasized in a way that they would never be in a slow air or a waltz in the same meter. So our first tune by ear is one of those retreat marches in three quarter time. It's a pipe march called When the Battle is Over. Now it's attributed to pipe major William Robb. Um, I am not completely certain if he wrote this tune as in composed it or if he arranged it, for pipes, sometimes it's a little hard to tell in a pipe collection whether the name is the composer's name or an arranger's name. It's called When the Battle is Over. Retreat marches were used in um, Scottish regiments, which most of them do in fact maintain their own pipe band, a regimental pipe band. Um, retreats are meant to be a signal for how to move. Um, a regular march is going to move you forward. A retreat march is going to tell you to withdraw. It, this does not mean that it's a, you know, like an emergency retreat chaos type of thing. It's probably an ordered retreat. And the title of this one, When the Battle is Over, clearly indicates that, you know, think, the action is done. Is it this time to move back? And um, so let me play it for you. <laughs> like this, um, pipe music in general, um, is making use of the bagpipe scale, which which would have a, a low G in the key of A. G natural. 
So um, this this tune has a little bit of a question and answer thing going on. And so let me present you with the first question. Our pickup notes, A and B. And then our first um, main figure. Let's just learn that. Next phrase. That's coming down from an F sharp, E, C sharp. And the first one is climbing the scale and jump to a high A. Down from F sharp, gap, and a gap. our first question phrase. Here's the next phrase, the answering phrase. Pick up notes of A and B. So just like the first uh, phrase started. But then it comes down with a scale that has a gap. The gap is the D note. We don't play that one. In fact, we don't play a D note anywhere in this tune. So up to E. Down the scale. All right, so that is the first answer. Putting them together, we have the question and the first answer. that there is a difference between some of the eighth notes. Some of them are dotted, as in the first one. And some of them are straight. So you can hear that contrast between dotted and not dotted eighth notes in this tune. All right, so we had our first phrase with the question and the first answer. The next part of the tune is the very same question, unchanged, with a different answer. So here's the second time the question gets asked. The second answer starts the same as the first answer, and it changes here. So simply the last two notes have changed. The first answer was this. And the second answer. So just a little change from right down the scale with that gap so that you can land on a B note. Second time, come up so that you can land on the A note. Of course, with the rhythm. With the question, second answer, here are the two phrases put together. to sign in on the live stream here to see if it has sound. So let me just check that. 
Why, yes, it does have sound. All right, so I won't worry about it anymore. All right, um, so that is the first half of When the Battle is Over. And I'll just mention, I don't think I did in introducing this. This is one of the most commonly played retreat marches at mass bands at a Scottish festival. If you had a whole bunch of pipe bands, they get together, they do a mass bands parade where they play some tunes all together. Um, generally, it's really popular with the people at the festival because who wouldn't like, you know, a hundred bagpipers playing all at once. It's just very big and spectacular visually and um, visually appealing. The pipers playing in it, on the other hand, they probably prefer just to play with their own band where they know the repertoire better and they can perfect it. Um, mass bands tend to be a little bit more chaotic for the participants um, because you're playing with different bands, each with a sort of different notion of uh, whether they play it at the right tempo or whatever, they have to kind of get it together for the mass bands. Um, but what a lot of fun. This is one of the best um, best known of the retreat marches generally played at the end of the mass bands as they leave the field. Okay, uh, the second part. Second part of the tune starts with these pickup notes, A, uh, E, and C sharp. So let me just tell you about the structure. The B part is structured exactly the same as the A part. The question is different, but the two answers, first and second answers, are the same. So we just have to learn one new bit, this new question. Pick up notes A and C sharp, or E and C sharp. It's a scale with that gap again, no D note. second half of that question is another scale from A. Remember G is natural, F sharp and E, so it's right down the scale. So the two halves of the question put together are followed up with the answer. Second answer the second time. So let's just review that structure. Um, first, the B part has the new question. The first answer. The new question again. And the second answer. has that first question. And then the first answering phrase. The question again. Second answering. And repeat.
tune might be played faster um, in a in a march actual marching setting. That was a little, I think, a slow tempo. Really, the tempo is anything that is in fact suitable for walking. It's a march. So, uh, how fast do you want to walk? How do you fast do you want your pipe band to walk, um, or your fiddle band? So um, I'm going to take it at a little faster tempo. piping style ornaments. Uh, these ornaments are absolutely necessary for the pipers to play because otherwise there'd be no articulation. Um, you know, you inflate the bag, the sound starts, and unless you do something with your fingers, it's just a continuous sound. So um, in order to give this thing any kind of articulation, the pipers are always doing ornaments. Now I'm doing ornaments quite a lot. I don't necessarily ornament every note, but I ornament most of them. Um, when you're just starting out, just try to ornament a few. Pick some ornament theme, like for example, adding the finger on. So I'm delaying the change of articulation with the bow in this case. You can do this on a on a flute or a you know a wind instrument as just as just as well where you change the note a little later than you change the beat. So that's a hammer on type of thing. You can do that on a plucked string instrument too. You could pull off. Um, so where you start a note higher and pull off. Um, that's often effective on some instruments where the coming up from below is not effective. And the other thing you can do is this. This is most, um, that, that is probably the ornament that's most um, imitative of what they're actually doing on the pipes, which is some stuff like this, where they're changing the note in a very rapid way. And... I'm tapping the string rather than, I'm not trying to make a sound. It's basically hitting the string. So I, I sometimes combine those two different styles of ornaments to make one ornament. Um, so I'm doing both and, and combining it into And depending on the timing, you can get a different uh, effect with the ornament. So two slightly different effects there based on timing. Anyway, that's a little side note on ornamentation. I hope you enjoyed When the Battle is Over. Here's our next tune. At the live workshop, our next ear tune was The Snowy Path. Uh, this is a slip jig, and we... We did this one because it's a slip jig that is not completely filled with notes. In a bar of 9-8, you could have 9 eighth notes, as the tempo marking indicates. Um, this slip jig is a little more merciful in that it usually has six eighth note, or six notes, a uh, quarter and eighth um, mix, instead of nine. So fewer notes, a little easier to learn. Let me play it for you. It's called The Snowy Path, and it's by Mark Kelly.
does it. And Mark Kelly was in the band Altan, um, which is based from Northern Ireland, a Northern Irish style of music. Um, has a lot in common with Scottish, and um, I chose this tune because it definitely circulates in sessions. People love to play this one. It's a real favorite of mine. Um, so let me teach you how to play it. The first measure of the tune, you keep start on F sharp and you keep coming back to an F sharp. Second bar is uh, starting on a G and we're using G arpeggio notes of G, B, and B. So there's a triplet at the end of that bar. It's up the arpeggio with an E note, back down the arpeggio. Is the same as the first. The fourth bar to close it out, to close out the phrase, is um, scale work starting on the note E. It goes down, it goes up, it goes down again. second four bar phrase of the A part. Uh, it's almost the same. So we have the same opening phrase. This arpeggio work. And the second phrase ending is that first phrasing phrase ending was the same measure. Go down the scale in the triplet. Second time up the scale in the triplet. So let me put the phrases together. repeat because that that phrase ending is telling you go on to the next thing it's a real clear signal so I'm not going to repeat it if you do want to repeat that a bunch uh, rewind the YouTube video and um, the B part so the B part is where the cool chords happen in fact the melody outlines what those chords should be uh, the first chord Oh, and I am sorry to say, I should warn you that if you look this tune up on the internet, you may very well find a version with wrong notes and bad chords. Ah, don't use the bad chords. Use these chords. These chords are Mark Kelly's chords. He's the composer, and this is what he wanted the tune to sound like. So the, the first chord in the B part is an F sharp minor chord. This tune is in the key of D, and this is an interesting chord to have in the key of D. And um, this is what makes this tune so amazing, this chord progression that we're about to hear in this B part. So it's an F sharp minor chord. The melody note is C sharp. So it's a dotted quarter note. The next measure is G arpeggio notes. Again, it's outlining that G arpeggio. So it's B, G, B, climb the scale. So G chord. is um, a B minor chord, B minor. 
And the melody note is the top one of that chord, F sharp. And again, the, the chord is outlined in the melody there with that F sharp, D note, and B note. And the end of phrase, a D chord, again outlined in the melody with an A note, an F sharp, scale work. So it outlines two notes in the D arpeggio that form that chord. So let's put the four cool chord measures together. We have the F sharp minor chord starting with the C sharp note. G chord. B minor chord. D chord. I'll play it again. Excellent. Now, the last phrase starts out with the first two measures being the same. And then here's where it changes, because this is the wrap up and turn around, make you start over again. So this third bar of the second phrase of the second part of the tune is a, a series of descending. I, you know, I can't get people to stop calling. Call from Sheehan Grace. Call from Sheehan Grace. So this is how it goes. There's a series of descending. A series of descending gaps intervals um, and they are not all the same so it's D to an open A then a B to an F sharp and then an A to the F sharp so it, it pedals on that F sharp twice you'll see bad versions of this tune where they try to um, regularize those intervals that's not how it works they're all different and then the ending is which sends you back to the beginning of the tune. So let me put together that second phrase. tune of the snowy path. I'm going to put all the parts together. It's meant to be played a little slow. Um, you wouldn't go racing down a snowy path, would you? Um, so it's meant to be just a little slow. And uh, yeah, sure, you could play it faster than that if you want, but it doesn't have to go a lot faster. All right, 
for our third ear tune, um, I ended up teaching another slip jig called Driving the Steers, or Iemen Nagauna, um, which is the Gallic name. That means driving the steers. Um, this one, well, first I'll play you the slip jig version of it. out and queued up, shouldn't I? Um, which is Simon Fraser's collection. And Simon Fraser's collection um, from 18, 15 or 16, I can't quite remember. Um, let me find it. In Simon Fraser's collection, Here's what he has to say about it. He says, this was a tune that his grandfather was very fond of singing. Uh, you should know that it, Simon Fraser, the tune, tune um, compo composer collector, um, had, came from quite a musical family. His father was a great Gallic singer. His, um, both his grandfathers were both um, singers. Um, and this is a, wonderful and one of the principal collections of Highland music. Um, and because he collected it from grandparents, uh, it's a real look into the 1700s and earlier music. Um, so Simon Fraser says this, the words of this song uh, describe his grandfather perfectly, but he says his grandfather is not the composer of the song. Which, which does need to be clarified because his grandfather composed an awful lot of songs. Um, actually, both of them did, since he had two singing grandfathers. So um, here's how it is in the Simon Fraser collection. It's a slow air here. when you have it as a slow air. So let's learn, once again, the slip jig version of it. All right, just to remind you of what tempo, <laughs> what kind of tune we're actually working with. Pickup note is a G. Here's the beginning of it. So it's, it's all downward moving. It's basically a scale passage with some gaps and repeated notes. Second measure. Start 
part to it. But it heads up instead of heading down. So the two measures put together. is the same as the first for starters, but then it finishes in a different direction so that you can wrap up the phrase. So here's how it goes. So instead of the ending, and the ending, It's scale work with a gap, no C, no C or C sharp. So that second two bar phrase. Okay, I know that one's a garbage call. All right, so uh, we were playing the first half of the tune. All right, the um, second half of the tune. Pickup note is a D. And then we're going to be doing scale work. We're always skipping the C. We don't, we don't want to play the C. That's where the hole in the scale is. So it's just up and down from the B note, skipping the C. And back down. Again. starts the same way, but it has a little reversal of notes in order to um, arrive at a sort of halfway point conclusion. So it starts the same. The third measure, same as the first. So there's that gap, and the gap for the F sharp going up, but not on the way down. And the ending starts on an E. We're gonna go down the scale, up the scale, uh, with gap at the C. And ending on the E note, it's still hanging. This tune leaves you hanging. It's, uh, you know, encouraging you to continue. Play it again. So the last bar again. So here's the B part put together.
All right, that's the B part. Whole tune put together, driving the steers. <laughs> steers. I got one little addendum to this this uh, piece. Let me, let me go get it. So uh, we, we've had lots and lots of slip jigs in our repertoire and we've even had one from Hamish Moore. This is Hamish Moore's book, Rumbling Brig. Um, so Hamish, great small piper from the Borders region. It really did a lot of revising, uh, or reviving, shall I say, reviving of of the um, the playing of the Scottish small pipes. Big, big uh, force in getting them revived. We had a tune of his called the Happy Farewell a long time ago. When was that? in book, Happy Farewell. Well, I have it on my list here somewhere. It's a very long list. Uh, let's call it around book seven, six or seven. Way back, we had his tune called the Happy Farewell. Um, and that's because Hamish was a veterinarian and he said farewell to it, to, to do music. Um, so as in his book, The Happy Farewell paired with a version of Driving the Steers, only he calls it Tending the Cattle with a Heavy Heart. And he describes in his notes how um, this tune, what does he actually say? It's kind of amusing. Yes, dedicated to my days, testing cattle for TB. <laughs> so that was his tending the cattle with a heavy heart. So it, it's the same slip jig with a little bit of a twist on it for piping because this, this tune, um, not completely pipeable, although it's really close. Hamish has turned it around a little bit so it's much more minor key. <laughs> version of tending the cattle with the heavy heart slash driving the steers. I just thought you might find that one interesting. 
All right, we're done with the tunes that were taught by ear at the workshop. So at this point, I'm just gonna go through some of the other tunes that are on the printed music. So since we're talking about printed music here, I want to point out there's a difference in the way I have notated the retreat marches versus the way the pipe band books do. Um, for reasons that make a lot of sense to pipers, um, they do not treat the first beats as uh, pickup notes the way I have done. But I have done it with pickup notes because uh, the chords make a lot more sense and they align with the bars. And um, so I'm going to I'll notate the retreat marches in this, in this section entirely with the pickup notes. If you look in a pipe book, you'll see it not with pickup notes and it'll look like it's uh, barred differently. Same notes though. So here's the first one um, on your printed music on page 29 of book 30. Um, Balmoral, there are other tunes called Balmoral. So we have had a Balmoral Strath Spay. We've had a, a, I'm pretty sure there's a quick step called Balmoral and there's a, uh, another tune called Balmoral Castle. Uh, anyway, we've had all of those in Fiddle Club and um, so this is the Retreat March. Now this one is by Robert Bruce. This is not Robert the Bruce. This is a guy named Robert Bruce who was the drum major of the um, Scots Guards. No, he was the drum major of the Gordon Highlanders at one point. <laughs> Another one that often gets played at um, Scottish mass bands. It has a second part uh, with harmonies. People love to play that one. Uh, here's a retreat march that I don't hear very often. It's called Dark Lowers the Night, and it's by pipe major Jay Mackay. the night. I like that one because it's um, not just not the same uh, being in B minor, right? Um, next tune is on page, we already did on page 29, When the Battle is Over by Ear. Likewise, we did Snowy Path on page 30. Uh, the other tune on page 30, Taina Gorum. Um, so the spelling of the main title is exactly as the composer, Ian Powery, wrote it. 
it's a little bit of a joke because um, Ian Powery was a band leader. He had a wonderful dance band. He played fiddle. Um, and as was custom for most Scottish dance bands in his time, uh, there were accordion players in the band. And his main accordion player was Jimmy Blue. Um, so the title is supposed to mean House of Blue, as in Jimmy's house. Um, so, you know, it's Taina Gorham, House of Blue. Um, the correct Gaelic spelling is in the parentheses. So Ian's spelling is not especially grammatical. Um, so we'll just, we'll just go past that. So here's the tune. Um, Ian Powery thought of this as could be a slip jig, could be a, a retreat march. I'm interpreting it as a retreat march. It just has very strong march characteristics um, in the pacing of the tune. Also, the dots and snaps written into the tune are the composer's own. And that is, again, more typical of a retreat march than a slip jig. slower. of Blue by Ian Powery. All right, on page 31, we have the Dream Valley of Glenda Rule. Um, okay, so Glenda Rule is a real place. It's not just a dream place, but I think this is a nostalgic look at Glenda Rule, right? A Dream Valley of Glenda Rule.
All right. Uh, so that's the Dream Valley of Glenn de Brule. Uh, no composer given. Uh, on page 31, there are two slow errors in 9A. First one is from the Simon Fraser collection. And the title is Gurmisha Gukrajchak on Uri. What pain I have endured since last year's composition of Simon Fraser's father, John, Captain John Fraser. And let's see what he had to say about it. Uh, yes, right. So the words, okay. The, the reference is not quite clear since um, Simon Fraser talking about his father, Captain John Fraser uses the word his, and it's not sure. Um, I think it means John Fraser's brother. So, um, so John Fraser's brother apparently died in 1756 after um, great suffering. And this song includes that. So, um, in nine eight, but quite slow with a little bit of ease, not enough to catapult it into a different meter but um, slow airs can have a little bit of ebb and flow in their time. There's an error in the printed music, which I will issue a correction for, where there's a missing fermata, a hold mark. Um, it should be over the last E note in the second line, fourth bar. So I'll put that up to the screen so you can see in the second line, fourth bar, should be a fermata mark there to hold that note. Can everybody see that? All right. Um, I'll issue a correction. It'll be posted on Fiddle Club members' site so that you can download a correct copy of this tune. Uh, okay, let's play, play it through one more time. <laughs>
didn't have my music reading glasses on for that. I guess I could still read it, sort of. All right. Um, so that could be interpreted much slower, um, a little faster, but probably not. It not. Whole, I would still keep it at a pretty slow pace. This is not meant to be played anywhere near as fast as a slip jig. Um, this is one of those tunes that's unique to the Fraser collection. And it's one of the things that Simon Fraser really excelled at was taking vocal pieces and reinterpreting them as fiddle pieces. And he had this really rich resource in his, uh, his family members who were singers and had a whole lot of vocal pieces just in them. Um, this next piece comes from the other big Highland music source which is the Patrick McDonald collection. Here it is. Patrick McDonald's collection of 1784. And this is a piece in 9-8 with three bar phrases. So you want your, your threes. It really moves in threes. Um, so it's called Sud er Meine Pogruam. This casts a gloom upon my soul. And um, here's one interesting thing, which is that uh, this same piece is also in Simon Fraser collection, slightly different version. Uh, the title in Simon Fraser is just Aha, Mainya Fugurum, this gloom is upon my soul versus this casts a gloom upon my soul. So it's a slightly different wording. Um, also, the the um, the title more literally translates as "My spirit is under darkness." Ha ma'anya fugruam in uh, Simon Fraser. So, I think it's like casting my spirit into darkness in the the Patrick McDonald title. Um, so let let me play it for you. Okay, before, before we start playing, let me just point out, this is a lot of little notes. Um, I spread out the bars so that you could see them all. There are ornaments, and then there are little clusters of 16th notes that are also ornaments, but they're not ones you're allowed to skip, <laughs> and you can't just make them up. So it's, it's kind of taking um, the idea of a simple melody decorated with ornaments and saying, hey, you really should do these ornaments and think about doing them in exactly this type of style, this kind of ornament. bars, very compactly presented tune, but with a lot of depth to it because of all of the room for ornamentation. Let's play it a few times through. sake, the version of this tune that's in Simon Fraser has a very similar A part. It's stretched out so it's no longer three bar, three bar phrases, and then it adds a B part. 
It's also in a different key and slightly different mode, sh mode shifted, I would say. major instead of a minor um so interesting all right we've got another page so on page 32 we have a slip jig from donald angus beaton uh we had a bunch of tunes from donald angus beaton about mm, book 17 or so something like that anyway donald angus beaton has uh lots of jigs but he has this playful spirit where he sometimes wants to insert um, a little more than the number of beats in a jig. Uh, he's got some tunes where he's just simply added an extra bar. He has one measure of 9-8 amongst the 6-8. This, in this case, it's entirely a 9-8. And in Cape Breton, when you're playing jigs for square dances, the steps are such that it's very easy to insert a slip jig among them without breaking the flow. And they will sometimes do that. So here is Joan Beaton's jig. I know she's related to Donald Angus Beaton, but I, I'm not up on whether uh, that's Donald Angus Beaton's wife, his mother, his sister, his aunt, his cousin, his daughter, or what. So um, somebody else will have to find that out. Joan Beaton's jig. <laughs> slower first. driving this steer so that leaves one more tune on page 32 our final tune for this workshop which is called drink the warts and spill the beer so i guess the warts is the um unfinished beer um not yet fermented or not yet completely fermented somebody will have to tell me the real definition um i know our becky was the one who clarified that this was a stage of brewing but anyway, I think the the um, title indicates sort of topsy-turvy, right? 
because uh, they're drinking the warts, really. It's from a book called The Piper's Assistant, which was published in the mid-1800s, um, I think in 1849. And uh, it has lots of pipe lots of pipe tunes. Slip jigs are, are quite popular in the piping world, both highland pipes and various uh, lowland pipes, small pipes, board pipes, etc. Slip jigs, quite popular among pipers. I'll play it slower at first and then bring it up to speed. gave you was a dance tempo for a dance that would use the running step and there are some traditional dances in Scotland where the running step was used and um, some of them survive uh, no notably in the Cayley world strip the willow is a running step dance it um, used to be or at least regionally was done to slip jigs at about the tempo that I just played sometimes even faster um, these days it's popular to play six, eight, even pipe marches. Athel Highlanders, for example, is played at rip roaring speed for these running step Kaylee dances. Um, but uh, there is a tradition of doing the slip jigs. And just so that you know, what were these tunes for? Well, they were dance tunes. All right. So that is our look at some retreat marches some slow airs in 9-8, and a bunch of slip jigs. And I hope you've enjoyed this excursion into the world of tunes that move in three. And um, I'll see you next time. Next Fiddle Club meeting is the second Sunday of May, May 14th. See ya.